This week on Hermitcraft. I'm so big. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Riffs. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And at the time of this script, it's been a pretty quiet week for the king of Hermitcraft and the revolutionaries reaching out to tug the crown from his head, which means they're hiding something. Although these recaps are written Friday to Friday, so by the time we've uploaded this, stuff is probably royally kicking off. If that's happened, let us know about it in the comments, because we can't exactly be a 24-hour news channel. Of course, the main news from the last 168 hours has been the rush of people starting minigames over at the new gaming district in preparation for the upcoming charity livestream, and the details of that should be arriving soon if they haven't already. Once the Hermits drop the info, we'll be sharing it on our community posts to keep you in the loop. So with all that to look forward to, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Joe Hills, who plans to decorate his axolotl shop for the season, and what better way to ease into the Halloween spirit than to tell Zombie Cleo you want to build a tribute to the ring. Okay, so you know how there's like a pale variant of the axolotl, like in the movie Ringu? Are you, are you Samara-ing this, this axolotl? Is oh, that what you're telling me? Sadako-ing, because it's Ringu, not the ring. But yeah. Well, was... okay, fair enough. I'm sorry that you have to be all original and stuff. Luckily, Cleo recently came into a large quantity of obsidian, and Joe repossesses some of it so it can possess his axolotl statue later. For now, Cleo and Joe continue their spooky, scary collaborations by fixing up the area around Joe's skeleton spawner, deep under the deep field pinball machine. Well, now there's a giant trench with a stairwell. What? A trick shot of his own is where the quest to complete all Minecraft advancements takes a zoom avoid. We've been largely skipping over it, but he's been chasing the in-game achievements little by little for a few weeks now. But now that it's time for the Arbalistic Secret Challenge, he has to hit several bullseyes with one piercing arrow and take out five different animals at once. Lucky then that Tango Tech is also an animal. Here we go! Yes, it can be done! Oh, I yeah, I did actually break the bed because uh, night had passed. Hmm. Okay. Oh dear, we better go get Tango his things. Throwing an extra entity into the mix works out just great for his Cornflower farm too. The LA's introduction into the game allows for a new redstone design. You just kind of punch the grass and glitch the items through it on an industrial level. And there they are right on cue. All of the items that got picked up get delivered to this spot. You know, maybe one day we'll put in some hoppers and some storage. iJevin sticks to more traditional methods of item sorting when it's time to build a new general mob farm, bigger, better and scarier. It's a really efficient thing too. The one runoff item in the storage is stacks on stacks of chicken from the chicken jockeys, which are meant to be pretty rare unless they're in this farm, obviously. I spent a lot of time doing this part. Every one of these hoppers, uh, one of these shocker loaders has two lines of shocker boxes. That one has way more and it's ready. And then finally, for everything that is not sorted, which is really only one item, chicken. <laughs> that it's a kind of mob you forget about until it's already too late. Just like all the Minecraft trivia facts, Jevin runs Cubfan through for another installment of his Hermit Smarts game show, which goes far better than the one we did, to be completely honest. Yeah, the, nice. the crafting ones are a little weird to ask because it's like you gotta kind of... Yeah, I, I wanted to put the crafting table down and like count the slots and stuff, yeah. How do you craft a bow? Stick? I, I, hold on, let me put down the crafting table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this cheating. one gets everybody. So. Uh, let's see if I type in bow into this. <laughs> Oh, don't do no, that. No, okay, 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 I won't, I, won't, I won't do that. Naturally, Cub is one ad banner short of a wiki, so he gets the good shelker box. So him knowing that you can bounce snowballs off the bubble columns is to be expected of him. With this in mind, Cub puts together his own minigame for the charity stream. You bounce the snowballs into the target blocks on the other side, and the team that gets theirs all lit up first flushes the enemy into a box with killer monsters. That's right, it's a new version of one of his pyramid games, Dunk Tank 2. Two can dunk at this tank. This time being a team shooty, it also has a cool new feature where you can dunk the opposing team in powdered snow. It's way more dunk for your tank. Boom, you hit it, it dispenses, it picks it back up. Whereas this one, if I can hit this target over here, like that, boom, it dispenses, and it lasts like two or three seconds, then picks up all the powdered snow. Speaking of tank, Tanko Tech. Zloy, did you pull a muscle reaching for this pun? Tango Tech named his minigame from last week Basalt Assault. See, he didn't pull any muscles. Neither is he pulling any punches. It's time to install the decked out two difficulty leveling system. The highest level is Vexes coming out of the walls because they can pass through walls, need I remind you. So the longer you're staying in the dungeon, the angrier it gets, but also the more you're going to haul out of it. 
Also, Tango puts in an exemplary artifact exchanger. The secret machine you find in the floor with the lodestone compass is provided and exchange the compass for the nifty trinket. In the meantime, Scar comes in with a bow to commit non-basalt assault on him. Oh my gosh, there he is! Whoa! Haka! No! Nope. <laughs> no, get back in! <laughs> yes! You surrender your head to me, to the king! Serpentine! Serpentine! <laughs> The continued struggle against her own horse drives false symmetry to hermit on hermit violence as well. Oh, I'm I'm making a quick getaway here. I'm making a getaway. Y you are. Um, it's not very speedy though. Oh, wait. Cursed to drive on a slow horse, false can only get rid of it by bonking a friend with the dare stick. Her pick falls on pearlescent moon, and this dare really is straight up violence, my friends. False limits her use of shelker boxes, which is a hit with some insane accuracy given that Pearl's whole deal is moving inventories around. I'm the cleaning lady. The I don't thing. do shulker monsters, false. Well, are you going to make one today? Unless I... you use chests. I mean, you're welcome to use no. chests and barrels. Finally, free of the slow ride, false does not take it easy. In fact, her understandable need for speed is compensated by starting a lengthy ice boat racetrack through her own base, with the intention to continue it through more of the server. Anyway, basically, you go all the way down from here. Yeah, you're going to come up there. <laughs> Yes, up that. I didn't say you're gonna fall down that, you're gonna, you're gonna go up that. As if Pearl wasn't doing enough running around after people's shulker boxes, False Symmetry arrives to complicate that by daring her stick and all to not pick up any shulker boxes she places during this episode. It's lucky for her that the cleaning lady services can happen between episodes, but in the meantime, Pearl stocks up her swap shop in the spirit of thrift shops everywhere and puts up signage to make sure people aren't tempted to use the king's attempts at currency which he'll have more of now that the soup group and Grian teamed up to exchange their emeralds for diamonds, as we covered last week. Pearl has no regrets and even takes on some of the royal quests which still have diamonds as a reward to put the squeeze on Ren. Just to add insult to injury, she even hot potatoes the king himself. <laughs> what have you done? Yep, pick what it up, it? pick it up. No! I <laughs> It just so happens that ZF has been collecting insulting injuries the entire season, but on top of his personal quest to get killed by every entity that can kill, he scouts out the most convoluted way to die too. The plan is to get killed by lightning while in the void, a feat only done in the overworld since it never rains in the end. But that doesn't even matter, the only void in your regular dimension is under the bedrock. Surprisingly, Zed doesn't call for any help and glitches out the unbreakables on his own. Then it's just a matter of dangling a pig through the opening while actively licking a lightning rod. Oh, my head's going through the trap door though. <laughs> through that tiny little hole. Get on, yo-yo. Ah! Oh! We did it! At Doc M 77s perimeter, the innovation continues, although we should probably call it Outovation, because he once again digs a big hole for a redstone build outside the boundaries of the perimeter. Although he still gets a standing ovation from us for setting up a fast feeding system for quick item crafting and decorating it like a giant crafting table. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a softie. Why did I confess this loud on video? Should no, no, I'm stone cold. Independent though the perimeter is, he still needs some overseas trade, and he swings by Corrales' port shantytown to ask for some paper and trade notes about the upcoming Minecraft Live mob vote. Whichever of the three options we get, hopefully it's a better swimmer than the bees. Oh. My. God. All those bees pass fighting over water, they dip into water and eventually they'll start drowning. Oh my god, what? Corrales has no shortage of visitors, although Vintage Beef brings him a piece of paper and this one's even got his face on it. Beef wanted to give Corrales an eyeful of the finished illustration and get the seal of approval from the man himself. Good sir, sweet face. On my way, but I'm on my laptop. No voice. Okay, perfect. This will work anyway. He's got looky looky and no, 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 as his mood. I love that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Back at the map making headquarters, Beef's card collection has outgrown the display wall, so he restructures it into three segments for common, rare, and the miscellaneous ultra rares and error cards he's printed thus far. And Corrales' rare card has gone through some rebalancing, so he can heal people just by liking their face. Face is going to be a healing move, not towards himself, but towards a teammate. He basically has no offense. Now, Corrales actually does get some facial rearrangement done, and will get more if Grumbot is to be believed. Exactly how he is to skin, educate Pearl, we're not sure, but let's hope that's a noun and a verb, not two verbs. So I'm gonna educate myself with a skin, uh, Corrales, because obviously I can't do myself. But 
technically, no, 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 no. That's, that's impossible. Even though, no, 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 no. If you've aged a year from seeing his Grian face mashup, you'll be happy to find out that Corallis also aged a lot of copper for the pipes over his beached tanker base. But his primary build for the week would be the Mandango gas station. Or is it a car wash with all the XP showering you? Or is it a vandalism booth with all the XP bottles smashing against your face? A clear callback to Parson Gas, the place even instructs you where to head after you had your equipment mended. Every purchase is celebrated by playing the Running Up the Hill song on note blocks. Too bad we already did the Joe Hill segment this week. Tons of balls coming in. Yay! XP Crafted is still making enough diamonds to hire someone to clean up after him, despite the king embezzling his stuff. And to show exactly what he thinks about that, he heads up to the Crassel to make an eloquent political statement. Let's back up so we make sure not to, not to pick any of them up. Get out. I don't like you. After robbing from the rich and giving to the pork, he hires Pearl to tidy the various shulker piles he's left around his place. And then he earns another couple of shulkers playing Iskel's Dig a Pie game, although the prizes aren't exactly the cream of the crop. And we also get to see Iskel's secondary objective of trapping people in a giant pie. Is there like another... None of these holes go like straight up. <laughs> Ay, chihuahua. That is... As we see elsewhere, the Pizes do contain a bunch of diamonds. Iskal shows off all the jackpot boxes along with the troll ones in his own video. And he didn't know about not mining the diamonds when he mined the diamonds, so from a legal perspective, that's probably fine. Oh, <laughs> wow, that is nothing short of great success. Hmm. Either way, it's made him a lot of diamonds and the king a lot of royal emeralds. So with the taste of success still lingering, Iskal embarks on another business endeavor. Focusing on the user experience with echoes of previous season's projects like Sahara, Iskal puts together some shop circuits which will deliver stacks of items at the press of a button, then figures out which items he's going to sell, which at this point are mostly bartering drops, villager trades, and whatever he can squeeze out of his amethyst farm. He still acknowledges he'll want some help putting the shop together, so we'll see who's ready to sink their teeth, their time, and their profits into this season's Pacific. Granted, this is not by any means finalized, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. And finally, we return to our recurring segment, which this week is entitled Lord of the Wrens, the Wrens of Power. Nothing related to the king happened. Why did I Photoshop this? And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>